hurricanes, tornadoes, winter storms, all sorts of natural disasters are giving us a reason to want some type of emergency backup. In the past, gas generators were our only option. Environmental concerns, outdoor limitations, and noise pollution from those gas generators have many of us exploring alternatives. And with so many advancements in battery technology, there might be some real good alternatives and power stations are promising to be that solution to a cleaner, quieter, and more versatile choice to your emergency backup power. I've reviewed a number of these power stations on my channel, and today I'm gonna to be talking about the Opus 2400. And by the end of this video, you're gonna be able to determine whether this power station is a good buy for you or not. I'll cover the specifications, we'll do some real life testing, and I'll talk about what I like and dislike about this power station. Hi everyone, I'm Justin. Thanks for stopping in and hanging out with me for a couple of minutes. If you're new here on this channel, I talk about everything solar. I share my experiences, the good and bad of doing your own solar system. And I also do product reviews like I'll be doing here today. And I share whether I think these are good buys or you should pass on them. And if you're in a hurry, check out the chapters below. You can find out exactly what you look for real quick. Let's get started. And when you order your power station, you receive it, you're gonna get this nice little box right here. The power station itself, two power bricks, a little strange. I'll talk a little bit more about that later in the video. You're gonna get a 12 volt adapter for your vehicle. So you can charge this up on the go and the user manual. Now let's get this cleaned up and then we'll talk about the specifications. And I've also put together a nice little graph for you. And I'm gonna put that right over to the side so you can follow along as I read off some of these numbers. The capacity is 2,223 watt hours. And for the inputs, we have two 7909 DC inputs. These are compatible with the power bricks that come with the unit and they can handle up to 240 watts of max power for each one of these and they operate at 12 to 25 volts. We also have two Anderson plugs here that are capable of handling up to 500 watts each. We have a total of six USB ports, two of them USB-C at 60 watts per, and then we have four USB-A ports and three QC 3.0 ports. And on the right side, we have your car output running at 12 volts and two 5521 ports at 12 volts and 10 amps. And we have a total of five AC outputs that should be able to handle 2,400 watts per plug because these are 20 amp plugs and an easy visual to determine a 20 amp plug on a 110 or 120 volt system is that little notch that we have right there. The battery chemistry being used is LFP. The life cycle is rated at 3,500 cycles and it does have a built-in BMS. And it weighs in at 46.8 pounds. For the width, we have 16 and a half. The height, 12 and a quarter. And the depth, 10 and a half. The operating temperature should be between zero to 40 Celsius or 32 to 104 Fahrenheit. And the Opus 2400 comes with a two year warranty. All Opus portable power stations are pure sine wave inverters. And that's important and because they're more compatible to sensitive appliances than say what a modified sine wave inverter might be. It does support pass-through charging. However, try to limit using this feature frequently because it'll reduce the battery life. And if you're not familiar with what pass-through charging is, I could charge this and use an appliance at the same time. And if we take a look at the display, we'll see that we have 186 watts coming in and we have around 56 watts going out. You could buy your solar panels directly from Opus or you could buy third-party solar panels, but there's a couple things that you wanna make sure to keep in mind. The voltage must be between 12 and 30 volts and you wanna make sure that your MC4 connectors have the right adapters so you can plug in to the side of the unit. And for example, we have the two MC4 adapters here that you would need. So this is the Anderson plug and then we would need this little plug that plugs into this and plugs right in. And then our MC4 would plug into our solar panel. And then we could do the same with the Anderson plug. And while we're on the subject of charging, let's talk about all the different ways that you could charge this up. We can use solar panels, the AC adapters, or even charge it up in our car. Now there is something that I found a little bit uh, confusing was, and I'm gonna put the graphic over here to the side real quick, 
but it shows that you can put four solar panels up to 960 watts. And I'm pretty sure that's for the Opus solar panels versus what they say that this has the capability of an input of a thousand watts from solar panels. So I did find out you can use up to a thousand watts of solar coming in, but those panels, I am assuming that is for the Opus solar panels. Now, the other ways that we could charge this is combinations through AC and solar, and you can have one of these hooked up and one of the uh, solar hooked up at the same time, or you can have just one of these hooked up by itself or just one of these hooked up by itself or two solars at the same time or two charging bricks at the same time. And this graphic right here should provide you with a better idea of what appliances you can easily power up and for how long. Phones, laptops, grills, refrigerators, and even air conditioners. And now we've made it to everybody's favorite part to where we get to test this out and see what it's capable of. I'm going to push this beyond its limits and see if that BMS actually does work or if we're going to tear up the unit. And we know that this is capable of powering up phones, LED lights, radios, and computers and things like that, small appliances, but can it power up heat guns and little small ovens? We're about to find out. And the first appliance we're going to try is this little SDS drill. It does pull a little bit of power. And just like we probably all expected, it powered that up with ease. The next appliance we're gonna try is the heat gun. Now this can go up to 14, 1500 watts, and we're gonna see if it can do every bit of that. So we have a max coming out of this at 1270 I've seen, so 1266, and it's powering this with ease and so far so good but things usually start to change when i start to put these toaster ovens on there let's plug it in and see what happens and did you hear that sound when i turned the burners on it went like a little fry noise but then it started up let's see if we can uh reenact that did you hear it that time it did it again now it won't do it again like if i turn this off and i turn it back on it doesn't do it you actually have to unplug it, turn off the unit, and then plug this back in, and then turn on the unit to get that to happen. Not sure what that was, but it's pretty impressive that it's running this little oven. It is gaining my confidence to be able to recommend this product, but I do have another test I wanna perform first, and that's to turn on the oven, the heat gun, and the drill all at the same time and see if we can overload the BMS and see if it will protect the unit or not. I have destroyed other units doing this exact same test. So let's see what happens. I'll start with the oven. Next, I'll turn on the heat gun on full blast. We're currently at 2,500 watts, a little bit over it. Now we'll turn on the drill. And there we go. The BMS does work. And on this unit, what you have to do is turn the power off. So you wanna hold in the power button and then power it back on. Then you'll turn on the AC and we're good to go. So that definitely gained my confidence to be able to recommend this item, but there's still some things I wanna talk about it, but it's always important to know if it works or if it's going to protect itself when we, we do stupid things like this. No one's ever going to hook up an oven, a heat gun, and an SDS drill all at the same time just to, to be doing it. But it's good to know that the BMS that they have designed on the inside actually does protect the unit. And because I mentioned noise pollution at the beginning of the video on those gas generators, I think it's important to do a test on this portable power station when those fans kick on, when it's under a load or when it's being charged. And I'm gonna use this decibel meter to do that. And it has absolutely no sound when it's on standby. Now that I have it under a load, the fans have kicked on. Let's see how loud it is. We're right at 52.9 and when I talk, we're at 70s and that's about a foot away. And something that has annoyed the hell out of me with other power stations that I've tested is when you have them in the off position like this right here, they use a lot of power. So after a month or so, you come back to use it, you gotta charge it up before you have any type of backup. 
With the Opus, it's really good at not consuming much of its battery when it's in the off position. When I have this off, and I've been using this for a little bit of time, it doesn't use hardly any power from that battery. So that is a huge plus for me because I don't like coming to a power station that I haven't used in a while to go to use it, and I gotta charge it up. With that being said, keep these things in mind. If you're gonna store this for a long period of time, say three, four, five, six months, be sure to keep your battery above 50% to prolong the battery life. And the ideal storage temperature is between zero and 40 Celsius or 32 to 104 Fahrenheit. And I've been using this unit for the last couple of weeks and I wanna share with you what I like and dislike most about the Opus 2400. And I just don't understand the two chargers. I don't know why we can't have just one large charger to charge up the power station. The AC outlets are rated at 20 amp plugs. However, I have found that the mics that can come out of each one of these are 1800 watts. And 1800 watts is completely acceptable. I don't think anybody's gonna have a gripe with that other than you're stating 2400 watts right below the plug. That leads the consumer to believe that each one of these, and even I believed it at the beginning, that each one of these can handle 2400 watts a piece, even though this unit is 2400 watts total. But that's not the case. I found on their website that each one of those plugs, 1800 watts, and the unit is 2400 watts. So I wish that being that it's right at the bottom below those plugs, that it said 1800 watts per plug max, something like that, just to clear things up. So that's really my only gripe with that. And I absolutely love the LED light that's on the back of this. And this thing puts out a serious amount of light. I can see where it would be useful in a lot of situations. And although this is a very small detail, the feet that are on this are like a silicone rubber. So I don't have to worry about scratching up the surface that I put it on. I like that you could just press and go on the AC and DC buttons rather than having to do a long hold. On some of the power stations that I reviewed in the past, this button, the AC, you would have to press and hold it to turn it on. On this unit, you just press and go. I like the overall design. I think they did a really good job with it. And the display is easy to understand, so you know exactly what's going on. Most important, it performed really well. And if I was able to answer any of your questions or help you out in some way, could I ask you of a favor? Please smash the thumbs up button. It would help me out. It would also let me know that I did a decent job on making this video. And I'm confident with my decision to say that I would recommend this to my friends and family. And for anyone looking for a power station, I think it's a good value play and you get a good bang for the buck. And if you're interested in purchasing one of these, I'm gonna leave a link in the description below where you can purchase this directly from Opus or over on Amazon. I'll also add it to my shop over at DIYSolarBuilds.com so you can find that at any time. I appreciate you hanging out with me to the end of the video. Hopefully I didn't bore you silly. And if you find this type of stuff useful or you're really interested in solar, consider subscribing to the channel and tapping that notification bell so when I put out new videos like this, you get notified. I can't wait to start the next video and I hope to see you there. Thank you for watching.